Hello and welcome back to the channel. I'm Loudguns and this is episode 6 of the New Player's Guide. Today we're going to be getting our guns out and heading off to look at some of the FPS mercenary missions on offer. The free fly continues so all you need right now is an account and you'll be set up to play with a few ships to choose from to get you going. Just make sure to use a referral code to get yourself a bit of startup cash and a free dragonfly hover bike to boot at the time of recording. I've already got my free bike, so rather than sticking my code up on screen, if you are looking for one, take a look down in the video description, where I've put codes from members of our community. Hopefully that way we can see if we can get a few more bikes and get enough together for the next new Babbage race day. Starset isn't meant to just be all about the spaceships, and serious effort is being made to give life to some of the planets and moons that populate the game. So if you're more of an FPS player, this might be right up your alley. So before we head into the bad guy's lair and deal with them up close and personal, we're going to make sure we've got a few bits and pieces, if we don't have them already. First up is armour. So armour in Star Citizen comes in three main types, light, medium and heavy. As a caveat, there are a couple of specialist armours for dealing with extreme temperatures on either end of the scale, but for the most part outside of the light, medium, heavy categories, it's about looks rather than actual functionality. Generally armour is a trade-off between a couple of factors, protection first and foremost, with heavy offering the most and light offering the least. However you also need to factor in manoeuvrability, where light offers the most and heavy offers the least. This will affect your movement speed and also the speed at which your heart rate climbs while sprinting. We're going to be doing bunker missions, where most of the combat occurs in tight confined spaces. I'm not too worried about covering larger distances and I want to rest assured that I'll take a few rounds before going down. Plus I think this Defiance set I found in the armour shop at Port Tressler looks epic, so I'm going to take the heavy. The class of armour will also affect the size of backpack that you can attach, with the biggest backpacks only fitting onto heavy armour. This extra space is going to come in handy if we want to be loot goblins while we're out there. Next up is guns. There are a lot of guns to choose from in SC, with everything on offer including pistols, SMGs, assault rifles, shotguns, sniper rifles, light machine guns and heavy weapons such as the railgun. Within each subtype are a bunch of different guns with a slightly different feel, so experiment away to find what you like. I personally am going to grab myself a P4 AR assault rifle, since this is one of my personal favourites. We'll also want to make sure we grab some ammo and potentially a scope if you want one. These are all in the weapons, attachments area of the terminals and gun stores. We'll also want to make a stop off at the pharmacy in the clinic to grab a first aid kit to take with us, just in case we get a boo-boo. Make sure to grab a stack of med pens, they're also sold at a wide variety of shops under the MISC tab on the terminals, and it can also be worth getting a med gun which offers the highest level of portable healing. While we're at the clinic, it's also worth swinging by the regen terminals to make sure your spawn is set in the local area to where you'll be running merc missions, just in case something goes wrong. Attach all of your gear in the inventory screen which you just get to by pressing I. You can drag items onto available slots on your character or you could just double click to quickly equip them. Your armour is going to dictate how many slots you have for things like weapons, ammunition, med pens. So if you hover over one of those, you can see all the circles pop up wherever you can attach something. So now to prove that we're not all the gear, no idea. First up, we'll head to the Contract Manager and we'll head to the Mercenary tab. First we're going to be offered a Security Contractor Evaluation mission. There's one for each planetary system, we're in Microtech so it'll be MT Protection Services. Unlike with Bounty Hunting, there isn't an overarching cert process here, with no equivalent of the Bounty Hunters Guild. You only have to worry about your rep with your employer, However, it does mean that you'll need to work up contract difficulty and rep across each system independently. Once we've accepted that evaluation mission, also make sure that you take a call to arms which will just reward you for taking out any bad guys. Once you're all set, get going and set your route to the mission location. This one's just below us here on Microtech. As you approach the bunker, you might get fired upon by the turret and you'll get this restricted area pop-up come up. 
This is quite similar to when we were doing the satellite missions. So basically you need to actually get closer in for it to register that you've uh, arrived at the mission location, at which point the bunker won't register you as a hostile. There are other missions though where the bunker has been overtaken by the enemy and that turret is meant to fire at you. So a neat trick is just to park your ship right round the back of the bunker. And you can use this yellow strut that's in the middle to block the firing line between you and the turret. And this means even though our Aurora wasn't the best thing to be doing evasive manoeuvres in, this is more than possible for new players to be doing out of the gate. You're at the back of the bunker now, so follow the edge round to the front. You can pull your main weapon out by hitting two. There's a lot of temptation when you start out and you've just walked into a gun store to go and buy everything you can off the shelf, but you really only need one and a decent supply of ammunition to start with. Where we're going, there's going to be plenty of guns with one careless owner who doesn't need them anymore, so don't burden yourself unnecessarily. Make your way in through the bunker door and head to the elevator panel where you get a hit sublevel. As we make our way down into the bunker though, it's probably worth stopping and considering who we need to be shooting. So the bad guys will wear a variety of armours, but there will be a common purple theme to them that indicates you have full permission to blow these guys away. But often on these mercenary missions, you're just the backup. So as important as knowing who to shoot is knowing who not to shoot. In different systems, the guards will be wearing different colours. Here on Microtech, all the guards are going to be wearing some variation of white armour. Taking out the guards on purpose or by accident will leave you as a criminal and without a job, so try to avoid it if you can. In Hurston, the security guards are going to be wearing yellow, Arc Corp are red, and Crusader are blue. Crusader is probably an area I'd avoid at the start. Maybe it's just my rapidly aging eyes, but the difference between blue and purple sets can sometimes be a bit too easy to confuse in my experience. So when the elevator's finished descending, head out into the bunker. And make your way through it slowly, clearing out the bad guys as you go. You've got a counter at the top, which indicates how many are left. Uh, the guards may well take care of a number of the enemy for you. However, the counter itself is a little on the janky side, so don't trust it entirely until the mission is complete. Controls are fairly standard FPS, but just in case, use Q and E to lean around corners, Control to crouch, R to reload, right mouse button to aim down sights. Be aware that not all of the enemies may be spawned in when you get to the bunker, so keep an eye on the elevators, as these act as the spawn lockers for new bad guys. Starset is obviously still in development, so sometimes things can be a little bit slow or laggy, and uh, there is a bit of desync involved here. Also, I'm a pretty terrible FPS player, so sometimes I just positionally desync myself, I guess. One thing I do really like about these missions, though, is that you do have to be careful and stop and identify your targets before you pull the trigger. So that, for instance, is one of the guards, so we don't want it to get ourselves a crime stat, so we'll just hold off on the trigger. You want to make sure that you complete the mission before you start even considering loot. The moment you start looting before the bad guys are down is the moment that you go get shot in the back. If you do get tagged by the enemies at some point, you want to just be aware of how to use your med pen. So I've taken hits there, and I can bring out my med pen with C, and then jab myself with left mouse button. That will give you a boost of health, and if it's needed, will stop any bleeding. Once all of the bad guys are finished off, it's time to unleash your inner loot goblin. I'd like to give a shout out to Devil and Sky from Frontier, who are two of our most experienced bunker busters, who I hit up for a bit of advice on what to target when looting. And one of their first rules was to focus on stuff that you can use to run more bunker missions, rather than worrying too much about looting for profit. We'll look at selling loot, but realistically you'll make more money chaining missions than you will from the loot itself. So it makes sense to be as self-sufficient as you can by using your inventory space to take items that will help you keep rolling. You can hold F and interact with guns to pick them up. 
Equip them to slap them into one of the slots on your back, or select grab to take the gun into your hands. You can also loot off the dead NPCs themselves by selecting loot from the interaction menu. And here's where I would focus on things like ammunition, med pens to help me run more bunkers. But the helmets offer the best space to cash ratio if you're desperate to loot for money. You'll also find loot boxes around bunkers. So these are the standard boxes that will contain a range of small items. Keep an eye out for the tiger claws in particular. These are going to be useful when slash if you end up with a crime stat. You'll also find medical boxes which contain a range of medical supplies. In particular here, focus grabbing yourself some spare med guns and also some spare med pens. I tend to also grab the refills, but don't worry too much about the various other drugs. Large loot boxes contain a range of weapons, armour and ammo, and they can be a great way to get your hands on some of the rarer items in game. You can even find things like subscriber items, uh, which otherwise you can't buy at shops. There is a bit of a bug at the moment, where if you grab one of the guns out and you put it directly into one of the slots on your back, it will lose its scope and also its magazine. So instead just drag that gun and hover it over the drop marker. That will drop it onto the floor, if you then exit out of the inventory by pressing I, you'll be able to pick that gun up. Doing it this way will just make sure it keeps its scope and its ammunition. Looting full armour sets can be a bit of a pain because you lack the storage in your backpack to haul the bigger parts. The best way to do it is probably to come down into the bunker just in your flight suit with a base helmet, and then equip the entire set off the dead NPC. When it comes to building up your armour collection, it's better to focus on the armour from the guards than that from the enemies. If you come to run bunkers with other people, it's a lot better to look like a good guy than a bad guy. It's a bit of a tight squeeze in our Aurora, but once you're back in your ship, you can open up the inventory with I and you can transfer any loot out of your inventory into the ship itself, helping to keep your loot relatively safe while you chain bunker missions together. Just drag the items from over on the left where you'll find your backpack and armour storage, and into the right side menu where you'll find the storage of your vehicle. Back at Port Tressler, I've headed over to the armour shop. In the terminal, just select sell at the top, and you'll see all the items you can sell to the shop. You're limited in terms of what the shop will buy depending on what it specialises in. An armour store will buy armour pieces and other items like med pens or undersuits, but it won't buy guns for example. If the store sells the exact piece of loot that you've got on offer, then you will get a slightly better price. But as you can see, compared to the payouts that we're getting from the missions themselves and call to arms, this isn't really the best use of your time. Instead, by focusing on stuff you would otherwise buy at 100% of its value, you will save yourself time and money in the long run. So if nothing I just said got through to you and you're determined to make your way as a used good salesperson, you can always head over to the cargo deck of Everest Harbour, Port Tressler or Bajini Point, where in the miscellaneous section of the shop terminal you'll find a container box for 1,237 AUEC. When you're in ship at the station, you can just drag that box and drop it onto the floor of your ship, giving you a nice little additional bit of storage. You can then always take that with you on bunker missions, you could just leave it in the elevator, and effectively it acts as an additional backpack. I don't really personally think this is worth it, but one place it does come in really handy is if you crew up. Having a box that you can just leave in the back of your ship will allow players in a party to quickly and easily exchange fiddly items like magazines without losing them on the floor. While you're in the cargo centre though, be sure to pick up the Versus Greatest Beverage, Cruise. Is it a drink? Is it a meal? Well, maybe it's both. Thirst and hunger might be an issue during these missions, and refreshments aren't in the loot table, so taking some Cruise with you will solve both of these problems in one neat little stack. Once you've got your contractor status, you'll be able to take missions such as defend site and evict illegal occupants, and these will largely follow the same format as the evaluation. Completing missions will help you build reputation with your employer, which you can keep track of in the Moby Glasses Delphi app. 
As you grow your reputation with the contract givers, you'll get access to higher tiers of missions. At level 1 you'll be getting 15k a job, but 2 will open up some paying around 20k. 3 is where things really kick off with 60,000 credit missions, 4 gives you 75k, and 5 will give you access to 90k missions. This is where you start to see the importance of grinding the missions for the rep, rather than worrying too much about the looting beyond what you need to keep yourself going. And that brings us to a key element of having a better time with SC in general, and bunker missions in particular. Get together with some friends, because it really is dangerous to go alone. I've probably overused the word janky quite a bit in this guide, but it describes SC FPS combat pretty well. Overall the combat feels really nice, but there are some kinks in there, and at some point you are going to end up flat on your back needing a revive, sooner rather than later as a result of one of them. Going in a pair or a small group will slow down the rep growth and mean you'll have to share the payouts, but will save you a lot of hassle and frustration. Plus, you know, friends are good. If you're solo and looking to find a pickup group, you're most welcome to pop into the Frontier Community Discord through the link in the vid description. There's no pressure to join our org, just come and meet people and get yourself some multi-crew experience. Finally, it wouldn't be a Star Citizen video if I didn't veer off and talk about ships at some point. And the one I'd like to highlight here is the Drake Cutlass Red. For a duo or trio doing some bunkers together, this really is the perfect ship to my mind. It's got plenty of space for all of you, including bunks for up to four in case you need to log out and re-log to a different server shard at some point. Lots of storage for loot, including a functioning gun rack for if you want to swap weapons with your buddies. But the pièce de résistance is the two tier three medical beds. If you do get downed, most commonly you're going to end up with a tier 3 injury, which these beds are capable of sorting out for you without the need to return to base. As an added bonus, the beds have some sort of IV burrito tech in them, and a quick lie down will restore your thirst and hunger meters, eating and drinking becoming a thing of the past. I know some people will point out that the Carrack with its tier 2 medical bed is superior, given that tier 2 beds offer the ability to set a respawn, while the tier 3 beds on the cutty don't. But that much slower speed of the Carrack getting to and from bunkers eats into the advantage to my mind. And with this being a starter guide, I felt okay about recommending that new bunker enthusiasts go and save up 1.8 million for a cutty red, and I feel less that way about advising them to go and shell out 26 million credits for what I personally view as a small advantage. I hope this was a useful intro to bunkers and that you head out, or in this case down, and put your FPS skills to good use. To be completely honest, this highlighted for me that I can be as guilty as anyone of not getting out and properly giving everything a go. Before making this guide, I hadn't done much in the way of mercenary missions, since I'm not really the biggest FPS fan myself. I even considered skipping over this as an episode, figuring that people would probably have enough to get going, and could learn this stuff on their own. But I'm very glad I didn't, since I found something that I unexpectedly enjoyed. Again, a big thank you to Sky and Devil, who gave me an awful lot of pointers, but that proved to me again that, whatever you're doing in Star Citizen, it's really helpful to be part of a community or organisation. My goal with this guide series is to give new players just enough education to perform, but you'll always be learning new stuff if you play as part of a group. Drop me a comment down below to let me know how you get on, and if you've got the bunker busting bug now. And feel free to let me know if you've got any other hot tips that could help me and other players out. Conveniently, a comment is also all you need to enter the monthly giveaway, which this month is for a Drake Cutlass Black. You'll be glad to know that for the time being, we've got just one more stop on this educational tour of the verse. In the next episode, we're going to be looking at what to do if you find yourself on the wrong side of the law. But until then, thank you very much for watching all the way to the end, and I look forward to seeing you next time.